this one. Really? Yeah. Maybe they ain't an oil four. Did you bowl on four? Uh, yeah, they seem... Uh, two was a little drier when I first got to it than four was. But, I mean, he's playing even deeper than me, so... Four definitely had more, like, if he hit outside early, four was taken off. Look at how you drop down. That's the pre-shot. Just a, just a little drop. Let's take a look at this one. Wait, let me see that again. Sorry, I was looking at the shoulders. Not the... That's the pre-shot. So that was much more stable. Let's go back. Watch this one. Let's count your just your rhythm. One, two, four. There's a slight hesitation there. Not bad. Not too bad. Right. Let's let's check this one out once. See better rhythm there. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it, it, you got that timing step and then it just goes. That one there, let's back that one up. Um, that was where we worked on your push away. Here's your push away in the pre. when I had you do that. Shoulders are better. Let's see what this next one does. Oh, one of these I really had you focus on. A horizontal push. Well, actually you are a little higher up. There's the Brunswick. A little bit higher, what are you, about three, four inches? I put my arm straightened out a little higher up too. Yeah. That one. See what happens to the timing here. About the same at the top. So you're done about, about right there. Let's see what this one is. You're still moving there. So it's, yeah. So you're about two inches, two, three inches there. So you can see what it does. So if you're looking for more leverage at the bottom, just so it's a plant bang, you know what you got to do. Where your neutral is fine right now because it creates that nice tumble, that nice roundness at the back. But on this stuff here, you would probably be better just create a little bit more leverage so you could get it through the front end easier. Now, let's take a look at your trail foot. This last one we worked on trying to keep that back foot down on the approach. And I think you got a little bit tilted in the front because we weren't thinking about it. Swing's even a little bit higher. So you're done right there. Pretty close. My finish position's a lot. Uh, sure it is. See, the, the things we're working with you now are, it, it's almost, it, it is some technique, um, but it's not major technique. It's just getting almost like a cosmetic blemish, getting it taken care of. 
in the future, like I told you, your work's got to be in tournaments and across the fall line. Because this here, you don't, there's not much you need to concern yourself with there. Um, trying to give you an example of a bowler I've worked with that. Kachuga's his worst enemy. He's got all the tools. He's only got three titles. I should say only, but a guy with that ability, he should have at least another dozen, I think. Because he's got, he's got more game than, than Barnes. He's got more game than a lot of those guys. I mean, Billy O'Neill, a ton more game. Whether or not those guys match up more, I don't know. I'm honestly but, pretty amazed that O'Neill manages to match up as well as he does. It's all ball roll right now. Because I, I, I've talked to other guys, and I've talked to Mike about it. I said, does he have a bag of tools? Because he's a, he, he creates opportunity every week to win. He goes, he's got one tool. He lines up, looks at the pattern, and he tries to play it. There's none of this trick stuff going on. Well, when I was out there, we had guys like that, too. Guys that Vespi for two and a half years, horrible game. I might have talked to you about that. Fell right into it. Um, Malott had those two or three years. He, every week he was on. Tommy Jones had that three or four years where he fell into it. The guys that can continue that for a decade or so, those are your players. And, but Billy's got potential. If he works on his game, it creates more tools because his game's pretty simple. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he doesn't do a trick. He's just, it's, it's something with his ball roll. But we saw what he does. The guys right now that can do this and be underneath the equator and then just kind of go through it on the back side of it. He doesn't really seem to have as much of an uncomfortable system. Like, he no, just gets no. there and kind of stays there. Yeah, yeah. He, but think of your game. I think of my game. If I can do what I like to do best and just go bowl and not have to worry about all that other stuff, you bring to it behind the approach, it's a pretty darn easy game. It really is. But if you got to start worrying about, all right, there's the lane, now i got to go do something to get the ball motion I need so I can compete with these guys, it's a tough game. It's kind of like basketball. I played basketball with my son this summer, seven years old. I dropped the rim down to seven and a half feet. It's a pretty easy game. It really is. If I was seven foot four, I'd probably be doing it for a living. Seven and a half feet, it's an easy game. That's the same analogy in bowling. If you can do one thing you do really well, that's why I, I guess some guys that have one game and they know, like a Zafino, not a great player, but when he's got it, he's got it. And, and he knows it too. See, he, 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 you get these guys, Butch Soper and I was after Roger Bacher. They're one-dimensional players. And they know when they walk down the lanes Wednesday morning, first game of qualifying, if it's not there, I'm going to get through this tournament and wait for my next week. But if it is there, I'm going to be in a show and I'm going to have a chance to win. So I don't know. I, I guess uh, would, would I rather be that? Eh, if I'm a Billy O'Neill or a lot and I get three or four years of that, yeah, I want to be that. But if I'm only going to get it once every swing or something, I don't want that. Barnes is, Barnes, Barnes is that type of game is what you, you try to get to. Let's go to the back side here once. I wonder if you can see the ball. There's a separation. Let's see where this one goes. Give me a tight sling sh swing slot there. Give it to me. Give it to me. Better. Much better. Now you got to find out where's my feel compared to my actual placement. That one felt pretty straight. I didn't over. I, it was like a little left, but not as left as some of the ones I was doing in. Uh... Yeah, I don't want you to do the figure eight all the time, but I do that with a lot of my students because they have no idea where left and where straight is. They have no idea. Think it's, they think it's straight and it's still right. This thing will go right up. Look at this thing. That's what happens when you put it in a slot. That's why you got a bowl. That had zero movement laterally. How does that swing not repeat itself every shot? It has to. It's got no movement. That's David Ozio right there. Unbelievable. You know how many guys would pay you 
a life's ransom for that swing. Look at this swing. Because you got movement, you didn't drop it in the slot. Watch this swing. Yeah, get, get straight here. That's about two inches. That's three inches. Three inches to zero. All because of where you set it and giving it an opportunity to fall into that swing slot. It's right there. You saw the Barnes. You saw all those guys. You saw what happened to Billy O'Neill. He tucked it behind his back. He should fix that. Uh, maybe I probably wouldn't do it if I'm making a show every week. Yeah. But he, one day he's going to have to. He drops it inside a little bit, though, so that's kind of... Yeah, he gets away with it. You did the same thing. You drop yours to the inside. You don't, your ball doesn't get away from you. Drop that to the inside. But you get it into the same spot now without any lateral movement. Which one's going to repeat more? Of course, this one. That's why you got to go bowl. <laughs> I can... Years ago, I could blow smoke before we had technology and say, oh, yeah, your swing's smack straight now. We got it fixed. You got to believe me. Because who else is going to believe? We didn't have the technology. This doesn't lie. It is what it is. So, yeah, this, this shot here is, I wish my swing was that straight. I mean, just look at that. That thing never leaves the line. Now, it's too bad we didn't, we didn't do one when you push it left because what, what you would see is it would go left of the line and it would fall right back to that spot there. So, do some more drills when you're not playing poker or working or your other social things you do. One steps, you know my feeling about that. Um, this is one, uh, did I ever show you this one? The walking drill, when your shoulders get too far forward, yeah. The belly walk, that's a good one. Um, I'll do this when I get motion in my shoulders because it, it makes me feel that, almost like you're walking with a harness on. Push away drill, do this in front of the mirror. Again, you've got to be able to feel, all right, when I push it straight, because the mirror's telling me it's straight, does that feel like it's a little left, or does it actually feel like it's straight? And then you want to make that thing brush your pant leg all the time. Um, get, this is just a four step. But I want to show you the non bowling the left arm just to make th sure that thing transitions back. Sometimes you, you forget about it. And I think you forget about it because you're, you're getting so soft at the bottom that it actually, this thing kind of gets lazy on it because you're focused on just getting the back of it and going through it nice and soft. Um, all the other drills are on your other stuff, but yeah, that's it. Shoot me an email in a week or so. Let me know how this is going. I really like that that slingshot you developed right in here. Ooh, that was nice. That's the straightest. That's the straightest swing I've seen in a long time, without having a pro on t 